Hello, I've started today from Garforth on the outskirts of Leeds. I'm here because I've chosen this as the starting point for my journey around the Leeds Country Way. I started at a row of terraced houses at the top of the main street called Town End. This is easily accessible by bus and also by train. The station's about two or three hundred yards away. The Leeds Country Way is a 62 mile circular walk around Leeds. I think it was devised in the 1970s or 80s. And I read somewhere that it's never more than seven miles from City Square in the centre of Leeds. This has always been one of the things I like about Leeds. It's a big city, but not so big that you can't be out into the countryside in the matter of half an hour or so. I walked from Town End along Barraby Lane, which used to be a little country lane that linked Garforth and Orsop in Leeds. I remember walking along it as a child and a, as a young man. It was a beautiful tree-lined route. Unfortunately, only parts of it still remain due to a lot of development on the Leeds side, not least of which is the A1M motorway that you could probably hear that was built maybe 20 years ago to link the A1 and the M1, which at that time ended in Leeds. I plan on doing the Leeds Country Way in the same way as the Cleveland Way that I've just embarked on, walking sections of it, but in the form of a circular walk. Initially, Barraby Lane is tarmacked and has got houses and stables and farms along it, but this soon gives way to the actual country lane. It's cooler today, one of those overcast spring mornings where you definitely need to bring an extra lie with you. I first did this walk about 25 years ago. I did it at the time over four consecutive days and I'm keen to do it again to see how much it has changed and how much the city has encroached into the countryside. I'll be walking as far as Barrick in Elmeek today before I turn round and walk back to my start point. And parts of today's walk have changed very little in the last hundred years, but the first part has changed dramatically. I'm now at the end of what was Barraby Lane. I would have, 20 years ago, I would have continued to walk in the open countryside until I reached Orsthorpe. Now the lane ends abruptly and there's a tarmac roadway taking you over a footbridge over the A1M. Once over the footbridge, continuing on the Leeds Country Way, the path goes downhill. Now crossing the Leeds to York Railway, a little wooden footbridge with metal sides runs across it. This bridge is HUL 4 slash 20, Crawshaw Woods. Now dropping down to, I think it's Manston Lane. There are farm buildings, disused buildings. The Amaranth Cricket and Football Club is a pavilion type building. 
in the distance. There are paths here left and right, but mine takes me straight on, down to the Cockbreath and then up the lane to Scholes and then Barrick. Along Manston Lane towards Leeds, for as long as I can remember, was a Bambo tank factory. All through the 60s and 70s and 80s, they built chieftain tanks there. And as a child, it was always fun going on the train, watching the tanks being put through the paces, or seeing the low loaders working their way through the streets with the enormous pieces of military kit attached to them. As I walked down the lane towards the beck, on the right are farms and horses in fields, but on the left is an area of scrub and trees that has never been developed. I think this is because it's protected. The area was in the First World War a munitions factory where I believe it was predominantly women employed. And there was also, I think, a, a terrible accident with a great loss of life. In amongst the trees and scrub, you can still see remains of old buildings and broken down brick walls. The noise from the motorway has faded now and this walk is very pleasant and pretty much unchanged for as long as I can remember it. It's only when you reach the higher ground that you can see the development getting ever closer. I've just passed over Cockbeck, which at this point in its journey is just a small stream. I think it rises in the Winmore area of Leeds, where springs and streams start. Further downstream the Cockpack becomes a small river that flows into the River Wharf just south of Tadcaster. The stream is surrounded by woodland and I had a woodpecker and then further back nearer to the motorway I'm sure I had a curlew and saw it with its long beak flying overhead. The path climbs steadily now, the next village along the way being Skulls. The path climbs steeply uphill now to a beautiful section of woodland, mature trees, bluebells, wild garlic just starting to come through. This path along the edge of Leeds is delightful and alternates between hedgerow and woodland. The surface is bricks and stones and I think it may in the past have been used by the munitions factory. It is now though a very quiet rural lane that could easily be 50 miles from Leeds city centre, not just seven. Having now reached higher ground, I can see skulls in the distance. A lane goes off to the right, goes up to Barrick, but the Leeds Country Way takes a more circuitous route, linking up small communities as it goes around Leeds. I think possibly for ease of access, it is a very easy walk to do using public transport. Catching a bus back into the city from your finish point and then catching a bus back out the next time. 
The lane I'm on is shown on the map as being called Bog Lane. I'm getting close to Skulls now and the way ends inauspiciously at the back of a row of semi-detached houses. Comes out onto the road that runs from Leeds to Barrick and, and, and Aberford. This whole area is steeped in history. The village of Barrick is actually Barrick in Elmet, and Elmet was an ancient English kingdom when the country was made up of a number of nations in the days before it was unified, I think in the eight or nine hundreds, under King Athelstan, the first time there was an actual country of England. But historian I am most definitely not, but of course I would love to share any little snippets of information I have with you. I just can't guarantee that they will be accurate. In a few hundred yards I come out onto the road and there's a small traffic island and on it is a tree that I've always known as the coronation tree. It's quite pretty in winter. The villagers always put pretty lights on it. After the coronation tree I walk a short way into Skulls before looping back on the track that will take me on to Barrick in Helmet a few miles further along the path. A small plaque near the tree actually tells me that it was planted to commemorate the coronation of King Edward VII. After following the road for a few hundred yards, the path takes a sharp turning right behind the houses, past the Skulls allotments, and then into the open fields following the hedgerows towards Barrick. The path runs parallel to the, to the road, about a half a mile inland. We're in quite an elevated position now, and the countryside to the left is opening up. This is where the Leeds Country Way heads after it leaves Barry. It crosses the A64, leads to York Road, and then works its way to the village of Thorner, and then on towards Bardsey. But this is very pleasant. There are low hedgerows, open fields, Lots of bird life, lots of insect life, even though the temperature does feel more like early March than late April. In the field to my right is a tractor ploughing with about 50 or so gulls in its wake, getting any little tidbits they can off the land as it turns the soil over. A red kite has just flown low over the path no more than 10 or 15 feet just gliding on the breeze and hasn't got any higher as it flies across the surrounding fields again looking for scraps off the land they can eat it's one thing that seems to strike me at this time of year about the birds they seem to come so much closer to us in their search for food. They must be in real need of it. The path now reaches Barrick in Elmet and Country Lane ends. I'll walk up to the centre of the village. 
There's a little, not really a village square. It's at a point in the village where four roads meet. There's this one pub, the Gascoigne pub, and the ancient church that are normally all centred around the, the Maypole, which I think is one of the biggest in the country. It's not there at the moment. What traditionally happened, uh, every three years it was taken down to be painted. It's taken down on Easter Monday and put back up on the Spring Bank Holiday Monday. The highlight of the day then, and I think it's still the same now, is a person who is strong enough and confident enough would climb all the way to the to the top and spin the weather vane, which is quite a feat. Whilst down, it's stored in a field at the back of the Gascoigne, which is actually Wendell Hill Hall and Earthworks, an ancient monument. And I'll visit that next time when I pick up the Leeds Country Way. Looking into the field, there's a green gate that takes you up to Wendell Hill, and there's a big blue tarpaulin and a scaffolding framework, and the whole of the maypole is laid out on trestles going up into the field. Possibly the next time I come, the maypole will be back up. I've left Barrick Hill. I just passed through a housing estate, down a little snicket between two houses, and I'm backing up on countryside. A little bit of route finding there, and avoidance of a very large tractor, a big roller on the back, breaking down the, the soil, ready for seeds to be sown. Followed the path by a hedge and a ditch on the left, filled with wild flowers. It's beautiful. And the red kite that passed me earlier as I was walking from Skulls is still around, putting in a lot less effort to flying than I seem to be doing walking. I'm getting treated as I walk and talk to a beautiful display by the Red kite I was telling you about. It's running along the hedgerows. More than 15 or 20 foot above them. As it spins and turns on the breeze, it seems so effortless. A few beats of the wing every minute or so manages to keep it in the air. There are now two of them. spinning like a whirlpool and then there were three three red kites all circling above me as I climb out of the little valley that I was in heading back towards Garforth I can actually see it now once more over to my right I can see the cranes at, at the spring shopping centre a little way to the left vehicles travelling on the A1M and then further across to the left the motorway and then warehouses at Garforth and the spire of Garforth Church in the distance. Looking back I can see Barrick and Skulls and the three red kites are now just gliding off into the distance. To my right now is a, a little hedge and a field filled with rapeseed which is now in full flower. The whole field just a sea of yellow. Again as on the outward journey this whole area between Manston Lane and Barrick is really pleasant. I'm walking through fields that have been left for grazing, just filled with grass, lovely hedgerows and nice stretches of woodland. There are distant glimpses of the development and the city, but then that I suppose is to be expected from a walk around the perimeter of a city. Here though, you could be 50 miles away from Leeds, not just a mere seven. I'm working my way back to my start point, and the quickest way is through Garforth Golf Club. I reached the perimeter of the club, and I've doubled back now towards a tree-lined ridge in the distance. Where the trees are is where Bog Lane is, which is what I walked up earlier on the Leeds Country Way. This is really too nice. I 
I think this is why I've decided not to go through the golf club. Walking through these fields and along the hedgerows is absolutely delightful. There's the field of rapeseed that I passed on my way down. It's now on my right, going up the hill. And there's a farm on top of the hill, set amongst some trees. My path goes at an angle across the field to a stile, and then across the next field to the wooded area. And beyond that, the lane. The weather's settled down a bit now. It was it's a little bit warmer. It was bitter this morning. No sign of the sun yet, though. Just a blanket of grey and white cloud filling the sky. Walking along a path through a field of crops, it's apparent that we haven't had much rain at all. The ground is baked hard and cracked like you might expect it to be in August. Not how you'd think a field in England should be in April. We'll see what May brings. I've come out of the woods and crossed Bog Lane, which was the course of the Leeds Country Way on my outward journey. I'm now skirting the edge of the fields towards Bamboo Wood. I'm still on the higher ground looking towards the A1M motorway and the whole of the Springs Shopping Centre and Thorpe Park office complex and the new houses that are going up around it comes into view. In the field to my left, which goes downhill towards the Cockbeck, on the map it shows the site of Bamboo Hall. Uh, there's nothing now to show it, but it would have been a lovely spot for a stately home, looking over the fields towards Garforth. I decided to come this way back as the new outer ring road extension is going to go past the far side of these woods. And for all the time I've ever visited them, they've been really peaceful, pretty much out on the edge of town, but, but not close to anything either really. Uh, now the city is going to encroach right up to the edge. So I imagine when the road opens later this year, the peace and quiet of this woodland will be lost. But it's a lovely wood. There are parts of it that are covered in bluebells and wild garlic. And there are lots of beech trees, predominantly beech trees, that are just starting to come into leaf now. And they've got that beautiful light green, almost glows, even on a grey day. I'm at the far edge of the wood now and about 100 yards away I can see the bridge that's being constructed to take the new road over the cockback by a substantial structure. So I hadn't realised until now that the road's going to come to within 100 feet probably of this bottom corner of the of the wood I've left Bamboo Wood now and I'm walking along a little track that skirts the old bamboo munitions factory. To my left is a hedge and fields beyond. To the right, the big scrubby area that contains the remnants of the factory. It seems like a good place to end today's podcast. If you've enjoyed it, please feel free to share it and tell your friends about it. And do, if you can, join me next time. And now, though, I'll say cheerio.